I'd like to thank my patrons for making this video possible, especially Wani, who we owe many thanks for constructing the imagine engines that allow this generation ship to coast languorous across the vast expanse of art time. As you know, uh, I'm sick of this bit. That was dumb. Uh, I think Wani knows I appreciate them. Right, Wani? You know I appreciate you. All right, let's move on. Let's investigate expectations, shall we? Won't that be fun? Let's take a moment to look at these common constituents of our internality and see if maybe they're secretly an absolute absurdity, right? On brand for this channel? Well, even if they don't turn out to be that, uh, we should do some investigation of expectations since they so regularly leap from the darkness to hamstring us and hang us from the gambrel hook with all the other artists in the art slaughterhouse. Let's start with the big idea. Some expectations are carefully crafted and pieced together. You vetted them many times in test scenarios. You know your uncle only calls when he needs a favor. You know if you don't walk your dog before bed, you need to tread carefully on the way to the bathroom in the morning. You know if you start a drawing when you have something else that you need to do in 20 minutes, you'll probably rush it and botch it. These expectations are the kind you've maybe even had to take some time to think about. These are the ones that make you edit your daily routine, decide when your phone is going to be on silent, or question if you're looking at something the wrong way. That's all good. But then there's the other kind of expectations. The ones you have that you have never even consciously thought about. You've never checked in on them. You don't even know they're there. You don't know they're there until they're broken. These are very interesting, and I think that these are the ones that are pertinent to the art practice. They're especially insidious because they have a similar energetic charge to the more careful expectations. Even though it doesn't arise until the moment of its shattering, you feel like what got shattered is of the same emotional integrity as one of those more robust expectations that we mentioned before. But it's really not. And hopefully, you can take a moment when these things arise to recognize that. You gather yourself, you take a look at them, and you see that you didn't even know you held that belief, opinion, expectation, whatever. So maybe you should be a little skeptical about it rather than suddenly putting on a new persona and acting like you really cared about that thing. That's all kind of abstract. But I think it's important to make that distinction up front. It's just we all have expectations, and we have expectations that are carefully constructed and ones that are less carefully constructed. Now, I want to apply that to something more concrete that comes up in art, and that is the fear of change or transformation. Or more accurately, how that change or transformation will be perceived by others. If you've been doing this art thing for a while, maybe a long while, you've probably experienced at some point the desire to shake things up. New style, new portfolio, maybe get into a different market, do something new, maybe present work in a focus you're not known for, or even introducing something to your art practice that wasn't there before or that you thought didn't belong in the art practice. For example, to include some of your vulnerable personal feelings and beliefs in the art. This stuff comes up for every artist at some point. And when it does, it tends to come with a very niche and exotic kind of resistance. The fear of how those that know you will perceive your transformation. This fear can take a generalized, abstracted form, like a shadow audience looming over you, judging you, things like that. Or it can take a more specific form. Images that you have in your mind of specific people reacting to this new side of you. For example, dad being surprised that you draw porn now, or mom being surprised that you don't, or your best friend thinking you're coming off pretentious or getting out in front of your skis when you start teaching a bit of art. You get the idea. Here's the thing, those expectations that you're shattering for mom and dad and the best friend, what kind are they? What kind do you think they are? 
are they that first set of expectations that is carefully vetted, that is slowly and consciously constructed over years of testing? Or do you think they're that second set that is more impulsive, automatic, unrevealed until the moment of breaking? Now, some of them will realistically fall into the first camp, the careful expectations camp. Some, some. But I'll fancy a guess and say that most are going to fall into the second camp. They're going to be the kind of expectations that have been aggregated out of years of casual assumptions and uninvestigated bias. If you're unsure about this, why not try investigating it in yourself? If it's true for the other people, for the people that you're imagining are going to do all of this judgment, it's probably true for you as well. Think of a peer and imagine, hypothetically, imagine them suddenly surprising you. you know, I think this is a soft skill that most artists already have, the ability to visualize their rivals and competitors succeeding at things when they are not. So imagine that happening. Imagine them surprising you with some great success. Imagine them unexpectedly getting too personal with their art and it works or incorporating some process that you don't really jive with and it gives them a huge jump in quality incorporating that process. Or if you've already experienced something like that, then just hold on to the memory of when you encountered this for real, of the real moment of surprise. Look at it sink into it, either the hypothetical or the real memory, and investigate what comes up. Look at those emotions best as you can. Why are you so surprised? How are you being surprised by this transformation, by this change? I'm not being rhetorical. Let's take this seriously. Why are you surprised that they surprised you? How worthy were your assumptions about your friends, family, and peers? Had you really taken the time out of your busy life to burrow down on your conscious thoughts about this person? Had you ever once asked this friend of yours, hey, are you doing exactly what you want to be doing? Or is there some much deeper, more secret thing that you wish you were sort of uncovering and getting into your work? Probably not. You probably didn't. It's, you know little heavy for dinner, even without trying to get better info. Did you ever notice that the expectations that you had laying around your mind about this person were, well, I don't know how to put this, but uh, random. They're random, right? I mean, if, if we really, if we put aside all the practicality and the utility and we just look at them raw for what they are, they're random. Expectations are random. They just came up from you watching them do some stuff and you weren't checking in about it, you weren't finding out more, and then you just misinterpreted it and created spurious caricatures of their role and identity in your life. You never applied a skeptical eye to these caricatures and then they just stuck on to your rusty hull like another barnacle. When you look at it that way, does it matter at all, that they broke your precious expectations, that they're getting out of their lane, that they're doing something you don't approve of or you don't think they should be pursuing with such vehemence, whatever. No, they're a complete person that you didn't even thoughtfully judge, label, and reduce to an image. You did all of that spontaneously and on less than a whim. It was on autopilot. What is that in light of the fear, anxiety, care, and self-reflection that it takes for them to actually undergo the act of transformation, to instigate, catalyze, and execute this new part of their life? Obviously, your contribution, the nervous desire to maintain your arbitrary worldview, is really nothing compared to what they're doing, right? Like I said, maybe that's not always how your expectations function. Sometimes they are carefully constructed, but I bet a lot of the time they aren't. All right, well, all of that, but for you now, just reverse the situation. You're the one 
transforming now or trying new things or adopting a new identity or taking off on a new journey in life, and your friends and family are the ones with the unconsidered mental images of you. They don't seem so bad now, huh? They're just these things. They're just stuff. They really don't seem so bad, right? Why are you going to get all bent out of shape and not do these things that excite you over these expectations that people didn't even know they held about you? They're not solid. They're not worth honoring or worrying about. They're just dream stuff. Most people aren't thoughtfully pruning their expectations of others all the time. They don't know where their expectations come from, either. Like all thoughts, expectations just appear from the chaos of the unconscious when the proper external conditions summon them. And that's all we can say about them, with certainty. That's a bit of a silly thing to base actions, personal relationships, and fears on, if you ask me. To some extent, we are all captured, confused, and ill-served by our expectations. It's okay to beat them up and break them and test them against some real-life shakeups. Also, back to the resistance we feel when we worry about how we'll collide with the expectations of others, here's a weird thing, that is also just an expectation. You're assuming people will think you're veering or getting inappropriately expansive or you're doing things you're not ready or qualified for. You're assuming their assumptions. That's a lot of layers of substanceless mind smoke there, right? Maybe not the most substantial thing to base the character of your internality on. Now, these are all generalizations of a sort, I know. But I think if you start investigating the character of your feelings around this subject, you'll find them to be true. And of course, this means we shouldn't pay so much mind to expectations, both those coming from without and those coming from within. They're just too easy to form and too rarely inspected to allow them to steer this ship as much as we tend to. If you want good, robust expectations, temper them in the fire of ambitious attempts, wild failures, and thoughtful conversations with others and with yourself that produce expectations that are careful and designed. Or just don't have any at all. That might align better with the reality of the world. The world is chaos. Things are so much more broad, nuanced, and flexible in this world that your expectations really only function as a crude way to grapple with the boundless complexity of the unknowable reality through which you swim. So, you know, use them for that but then don't let them get inflated above their station. Once the expectations start feeling real, or the expectations of others start feeling real, put them back in their place. They're just a utilitarian simplification that is not the measure of anything. Leave them behind when they become restrictive, when they produce pain, and move on to exploring the structureless and awe-inspiring reality of just being, which relies on change, relies on transformation through time to allow things to be perceived as being at all. Accept that and marvel, relish in the changes, in the unexpected. Why would you not want unexpected things to happen in life anyway? Okay, thanks for drawing today.